Hey, what's happening, y'all? Matt here, and uh, long time no see. Uh, <laughs> good to be back. Yeah, no, I'm uh, trying to get back into the swing of uh, making content and and producing music and doing all my normal stuff now that we're starting to get situated in new space. So we'll see how this goes. Still just going to kind of try and get videos out as I'm able. Uh, my main priority is going to be in, you know, producing my next couple albums and some of the other projects I've got going on, but I do want to try to get back to uh, putting some videos out again. So we are going to start with a kind of, with the guitar review. Um, this guitar in particular is a oh, cable got caught is a fret king jeff whitehorn signature guitar uh fret king doesn't make these anymore from what i've been able to see and we've had this one at work in the warehouse um for quite some time and i've always thought it was kind of interesting because it's got the uh, a p90 soap bar style pickup in the neck a single coil in the middle, and then a humbucker in the bridge. So, very different, very unique, um, and I've been curious about it. And then I was talking to a buddy of mine back in West Texas, Mike, uh, who plays with uh, The Problem, Mike Camden, and he happens to be a vintage guitars artist. And he was saying that he was curious about... Uh, the guitar that we had that had this pickup configuration. I'm going, I don't, I don't remember a vintage guitar uh, with that configuration. Can you find the SKU? And he couldn't, couldn't remember what the SKU was, couldn't find it on the website. And then this happened to show up um, on our sell on reverb shell, shelf. Um, and I was just kind of going through different guitars on the on the reverb shelf and helping to organize. And it's like, wait, this is the guitar that Mike was talking about. And I texted him a picture, and sure enough, this was it. And so he asked if I could give it a rundown and kind of give him a review and say, yeah, whether or not uh, it was something that he should look into maybe picking up. Um and so as part of that, I just kind of thought, well, maybe I could just do a video on it. And normally I wouldn't do review videos on guitars from work because I do feel like that's a bit of a conflict of interest. But um, in this case, we don't carry, we don't keep a lot of Fret King anymore. Uh, of crazy, interesting stuff in the Fret King line. Um, and yeah, like... Uh, for one, this soap bar pickup isn't just your regular P90, it's actually a stacked P90. So it's it's a humbucker soap bar pickup styled like a P90, dialed in to sound a lot like a P90, and if you switch it to single coil mode, pretty much is a P90, but is actually a humbucker. It's crazy stuff like that. Um, and so that makes for some interesting guitars. And I wanted to check this one out. So, and because we're not carrying Fret King as much anymore, they, with Fret King, they do tend to be more on the pricey side. They retail closer to $1,000, whereas Vintage tries to keep their stuff more on the affordable range, like $800 and under, with some rare exceptions where there's like a licensed part, like a Bigsby or something like that. Um, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, I felt like I was safe in reviewing this one and being completely honest and transparent. For one, I doubt there's going to be anything on this I just find horrendous. Um, and two, it's not a brand we keep a whole lot of. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about this guitar in particular. Okay. So I'm going to switch to screen capture and we'll just kind of look at what I was able to pull up. So this is the actual reverb listing for this guitar. Um, so 
So we are showing that it is a hard rock maple neck with, so the, the neck is maple, uh, but it does have a rosewood fingerboard on it. Tortoiseshell scratch plate, 22 medium jumbo frets, pearl dot inlays, graphite nut, yep, both vintage and fret king use um, graphite nuts. It's got Wilkinson easy lock tuners. Alright, so I don't know if you can see on there, but there's two holes in that tuner that you can thread the string through um, one and into the other to kind of lock that in place, almost acting like a locking tuner without the usual like screw contraption on the back. A little different. Uh, pickups, Fret King Double Coil WP90B, a WHS Vintage Voice Single Coil, and a WHHBCA Prize Fighter. Controls, Volume control, two push-push tone knobs, and a five-way lever switch. Comes with a luxury genuine Fret King bag. And it does. I've looked at the bag. It's pretty good. This is your, you know, nice gig bag, basically. Okay. So, um, because I couldn't find this guitar specifically on the Fret King website, I found the closest thing to, which is their Corona Custom. So it's a, according to this, it's a, and this is going to be slightly different from the one that's in my hand. So we've got a three-piece body with the four-inch center block made from American Alder. Got bolt-on neck. Tech nut, the classic soft C profile. I will say this isn't a super flat um, neck. It does have more of a C feel. It is a little bit chunkier than the guitars I normally play. Um, I would put this more akin to my Strat than say either of my Ibanez's or even my Les Paul. Um, it's kind of chunky. It is it is a little chunky, but it still feels decent. It's a little weird for me just because it's not what I'm used to. Uh, 25 and a half inch scale length, 22 medium jumbo frets. So pickups and the bridge posi position is the Fret King Prize Fighter. So, I mean, it's basically their take on a PAF, I believe. The mid position is the Fret King Dallas Special, a hot single coil. So, again, if you're looking at that, we're basically looking at their take on a Texas Special. And then in the neck, the Fret King Soap Stack, which is the P90 style up here, um, but it is... Like I was saying before, a stacked pickup. So it's two coils, but they're on top of each other instead of side by side. Uh, the switching arrangement. So you got your standard five-way switch um, that you normally see in Strat-style guitars. However, it also has a push-push middle tone. This says that it engages the neck and bridge and switch positions 1 and 5, as in twin double coil guitar, and in positions 2 and 4 engages all pickups. The bridge position tone control uh, works on the bridge mounted pickup only. Just like in you know your typical Strat, um, your, tone, your bridge tone control controls the bridge and the other tone control covers the other pickups. And then it's got a push-push switch, which the down position bypasses um, and leaves your neck and bridge pickups as double coil humbucking pickups. And then when you, in the up position, you're activating it 
and taps the selected neck or bridge pickup to single coil. And it's got a vibrato bridge and comes with carrying case. Uh, the Corona Custom comes in all these different colors and you can see they're retailing for about $1,047. Now, I also found uh, Music Radar did a review on this, the Fret King Black Label Corona GW. Um, I'm not going to go over this verbatim, but uh, they gave it favorable reviews. It says it's very versatile, fine build at a decent price, and with three different pickup types, it has something of a kitchen sink vibe about it. So that's something that you can look up. Go back to OBS, turn off that screen capture, and talk to you guys directly. So that's what we're looking at. It's a, a pretty versatile guitar. It's got, um, I believe this is the vintage white color and not, not my favorite. Um, it doesn't necessarily look bad. Just on any guitar, vintage white is, is not my favorite color. I don't like that artificially aged kind of thing. Um, it has kind of like almost a greenish, greenish yellow kind of hue to it. For me with guitars, I typically like to see the wood. I like to see the raw wood. Um, that's why I like Les Paul's style guitars with, uh, with flame tops. I mean, it's, that is, that is my preference. Let's talk signal flow. So all I'm doing here is I'm going straight from the guitar into my katana, my boss katana, and then taking the line out um, into my Scarlet. And that's getting recorded into OBS. So you might, so I've got my voice going through the voice channel, which is plugged into the computer via USB. And that's how I'm recording my dialogue. In addition to the line out from the katana, you might also hear uh, the guitar coming in through the microphone and hopefully that's not too horribly bad and distracting we shall see and let's just cycle through some tones right so we're gonna start on a clean channel and see what we got here so right now I've got the uh, bridge pickup selected and I've got the uh, push push knob down so this is in full humbucker. All right, what happens? Okay, if I turn that bridge Hit that uh, bridge push push. Yeah, that's a lot spankier. All right. Okay, I won't keep going with that, but. Toggling that on and off. Now I don't think this has a very coil. Now that that tone pot is just a tone pot. It's got a good roll off on it though. Okay. While we're working with a, a bridge humbucker, let's put some grit on it. Thank you. 
okay. What if we just do a little bit more crunchy? Yeah, that's got a decent tone to it. So let's move on. Uh, okay, bridge and middle, just to be a little bit thorough. Pretty spanky. Okay, put a little bit of dirt on it. That bridge push push doesn't do a whole lot in second position, but what about this middle push push? Yeah, yeah it's adding in uh, that neck pickup. It's definitely getting more beefy. Okay. Okay. All right, moving on to middle position. So that middle single coil Texas Special type pickup. I can tell I've been spending more time working on guitars than playing them. Not bad. All right. Uh, crunch. I dig it. I usually don't like high gain in uh, middle single coil, but uh, we'll see. Oh, that is money. Again, that's why that style of music, um, bridge pickup usually. Moving on to neck in middle. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that is that is strat tone right there.
sounds good. At least in the room. We'll see how it sounds in playback. But. It's got some sustain on it. I could I could live in that that fourth position for a while. All right. Um, okay. Turning on the middle push push. Yep. Giving you that same. Just adding that that other pickup in. How's this position sound with some grit? some stuff out of that. All right, let me put some No. <laughs> that doesn't work. All right, back to clean and moving to the stacked P90. Super warm neck tones. Sounds super that beautiful, nice and warm. Now, what does that sound like with the coil split? I'm hearing a little bit of difference, but not a lot. That is, that's pretty subtle.
not really hearing a lot. But that pickup is hot. Sounds great though. See, sometimes I think when I'm when I'm toggling that on and off the coil split. Sometimes I think I hear something, sometimes I think I'm wrong. I don't... I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Have you been able to hear anything as I'm, you know, hitting that push-push? Um, or is it all just sounding the same? Let's put some dirt on it. some high gain. So that's basically running through all the different stuff that this guitar can do, and it can do a lot. Um, that's what I think one of the cool things is about this, and I mean, yeah, there's not a whole lot of critique I can really have on this. Um, this would be a really good studio workhorse, just because it can do... You know, there are certain tones that you want for certain things, right? Um, here, let me make sure I got my Scarlet muted. So, you know, if you're playing a rock tune, you want a PAF in the bridge with some stuff cranked, and with this, you can do that. Um, if you're playing you know, different genres, and you're, you're playing in a genre where a P90 in the neck is is just the tone you need well you can do that if you need that 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 stratty spanky texas special kind of sound and in that fourth position with the neck and middle um you can do that so this is a very versatile very cool instrument i don't think any of it sounded bad um i do think it's like It's both like a, it's, it's a Swiss army knife more than it is a kitchen sink type of thing to me. Because, you know, a Swiss army knife, it's got everything, but it's, it's specific tools. Whereas, you know, the kitchen sink metaphor is where it's, everything's in there. Um, and I don't think everything is in here. 
but I think it has specific pickups and tonal options that are designed to do very specific things and a lot of those things are things you want in the studio or I mean I say studio because that's where I'm usually at but even live you know if you wanted to take that type of thing ooh, that's a good thought so you know say you've got a, a record that you used all these different kind of pickups in in the studio right maybe you grabbed a Les Paul and uh, recorded the rhythm tracks for one of your songs and then the next song you had an SG with P90s that you did some stuff with and then the next song after that you had a Strat in fourth position with some Texas specials in it you know what if you had recorded a, a full album with you know all these different creative guitar options which you can do in the studio but you wanted to take that on the road that's the kind of situation where I can see this guitar coming into play. It, it is a, a very specific tool to do a large variety of things. Um, and I can see that it uh, would do very well for someone who needed that. Because it sounds good. Um, I like the body. I'm more of a single cut guy, um, but this one's got, it's got some heft to it. It's got some chunk to it. Um, it feels substantial, which is really good for me and my preferences. Um, like I said, I'm just not the biggest fan of the color, but all in all, this is a pretty cool axe, man. Um, nothing to turn your nose up at, you know? Uh, the frets, fret work feels good. Uh, the frets are nice and polished. They're nice and shiny. Um, there's a little bit of scratch to them. I might could get them a little bit smoother, but nothing too bad. Uh, fret ends, I keep feeling those. They don't feel sharp. Like there's, there almost feels something a little sharp. But I think it's just, I think it's just that the rolled ends are so, are rolled so close to the end that you're catching some of that, that I'm catching some of that edge of the roll on my fingers because it's not actually anything uncomfortable or that's snagging my fingers or or cutting me or anything like that when it comes to what's actually protruding from the fingerboard it's just kind of on that upper edge that maybe now they are rolled really well and almost surgically so uh, one might could go over them a little bit to smooth that out but that would actually, in my opinion, be more of a preference thing than anything that's like technically needs to be fixed. But yeah, nice guitar. Um, let me put this back in the stand right over there. And I keep looking over here because my screen's here, my camera's here. I'm getting used to a new camera position. This is this is all new environment for me. <laughs> but we're trying it out. We're getting it done um, and seeing what kind of cool stuff we can come up with. But so yeah, that's the the Fret King. Let me double check that name real quick. Uh, Geoff Whitehorn. Yeah, G. Jeff Whitehorn. So that's the Fret King Jeff Whitehorn uh, signature Corona Black Label Super Guitar Extravaganza uh, S style <laughs> guitar. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, I'm. I can't afford to uh, pay to keep it. I'm gonna take it back to work tomorrow. And put it back on the shelf so that some lucky person 
uh, can buy it for uh, significantly cheaper than retail off of our reverb store. Again, it's kind of weird reviewing guitars that I just brought home from work, but uh, yeah, it's uh, something to try on for size. Anyway, that's a cool guitar, and uh, Mike, I hope this helps. I hope this answers your questions and gives you some different, uh, you know, tones to listen to and check out and see if this is what you're looking for. If it is, uh, hit up me or Joe before... Uh, viewers see this and decide to snag it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that is enough for this video. Um, again, we're getting back in the swing of things. We'll see what else we can keep uh, pumping out because I've got another guitar I want to review. Which, if you saw my shorts before I kind of went offline for a while, this monstrosity that I built, uh, the double cut from Harley Benton, that I did all sorts of crazy mods on and put P-Rails with triple shots. Um, this is one of the next uh, guitar review videos coming down the line. This is still in my plan to do a full video on. Just life has happened. But. We will get to it. Alright, and I'll wrap it up. Um. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, for hanging out with me, and, uh, yeah, chime in in the comments, let me know your thoughts, if you've got any questions, um, or, or just want to chat, man, it's, it's been a while since I talked to any of you guys, but I hope you're all doing great, and, uh, you're awesome, and have a good one.